hi guys welcome back to batter box so in this video i'm going to be talking to my fellow rccg members rccg stands for the redeemed christian church of god this is probably the church with the highest number of members in the country and the church with also the highest number of denominations and branches everywhere in nigeria and not to mention of places like london usa germany i mean i give it to them the organic growth has been quite phenomenal for spreading the gospel and for spreading the word of god and i myself i used to be a member of rccg so that's where i'm coming to with this video and what i want to tell my fellow members is that it is time for daddy go to step aside it is time for pastor Anubwe to i won't say resign but he just need to take a lesser impactful role so for someone like daddy to come up and uh, say what he said that is enough is enough as in he's done enough he's uh, 82 years old i believe at the time of this recording and here's what i mean there's something in economics for those of you who know called the law of diminishing returns and the law of diminishing returns means that when you are producing a particular unit you produce you produce up to a point whereby every additional unit you produce does not really add any output does not improve or increase the value by putting more and more it makes no difference that's when you stop putting stuff out so because it's at that point a waste to try and increase production because you've maximized or you've reached the maximum, you've reached the highest point that you can ever generate. And I want to add you that Pastor Adiboye also of Lit is someone who has got to that point where God might need his role in a different capacity. And if you start planning about succession, succession means that you have somebody else take over or you have somebody else be the face because nothing in this life is permanent. He of all people as a man of God should know that this world and all the things in this world are all vanity and they are all fleeting. So that power, that influence that he has will all be gone at one day. We're all visitors here. We're not going to be here forever. And daddy too will not be here forever. He cannot fight age. He cannot find time. There'll be a point where he needs to step aside. And people step aside for many, many reasons. So I'm going to give you some examples of some things he has said recently. Uh, besides the recent one, where he said God is directly con controlling the era, or that God is involved in the era. And I'm like, who are these people surrounding this pastor? Like the church itself should have a governing membership council that should be able to tell him to step aside because the church really is a business. You cannot have a business without a board of directors. The board of directors are the ones that will advise, including removing the CEO if it's time to do so, or the CEO is causing detrimental damages to the body of Christ. So I know half of the people here will say, how dare you talk about God? You're not supposed to talk about the man of God, uh, touch no man anointed. No, guys, let's reason. This is not about touching the anointed or not the anointed, nothing like that. So a few things I want to say is number one, um, what he said were lies most of what the man of god yes daddy gu what he said were lies and they were not true him saying that we are spending more money on importing and we're a country producing oil is also a lie that is not true that's not founded anywhere look at the research in 2023 nigeria exports more than it imports so the video i'm referencing i'm going to put a link to that video here if you guys want to check that out in 2023 the total crude oil we exported is over 51 billion dollars and what we imported was only 20 billion dollars so in other words what he said saying that uh, nigeria is spending so much money importing no that's not true that is not founded anywhere and i encourage a lot of these our leaders to follow the news follow the current events if it's time for you to leave the pulpit i would suggest that daddy should specify that okay well, he wants to be a politician let us all know that he's a politician because this is also part of the problem because when you have a yoruba pastor saying things like this because he's anointed one who happens to be a muslim by the way but because his wife is a ordained minister of the church he now throws his weight behind you know, despite the suffering that you know, is causing upon his millions of members people can see through all that that's why you also like Tunde bakari he was so angry at jonathan that he decided to enter politics himself with Buari of all people so where's Tunde bakari now that is why the children of God should not be blindsided by these so-called GOs and men of God and holy and anointed people that they just come up and say, God say he should run for office like Bakari did. Because again, Jonathan was in office. Go for it. Where is Bakari today? Why is he not running against me? Why is he not saying anything? Bakari then attended every other Sunday sermon to a criticism of Jonathan's administration. Today, where is he? And then you have this uh, daddy GO too, who himself, during Jonathan era, were all against Jonathan. A Christian, by the way, a, 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 a professed Christian man of God. But no, they put Buari in. Now he's coming to tell us, as a Yoruba man, that the Yoruba guy that is there is doing his bidding. And because of that, God told him that our president, you know, like it's just sad to see again men of God like this who put tribe over religion, who put tribe over the welfare of the people. And that is why, sadly, 
Nigeria probably will never get better, like I keep saying in our lifetimes. Also, you're making Nigeria look tribal. And you are encouraging those who say Nigeria is a tribal state. Because you also need to recognize the optics, how those things look. There needs to be a communication department for all these churches. And I would suggest that Redeem should also have one for damage control and for the kind of communication messages that go out. It's like uh, someone is running for political office. He has a particular message. He has to stay in message and stay in script. You just cannot go off and be having brain farts. You know, again, that is someone who is, I believe, you're retired, you're enjoying the youth, you're enjoying the reward of all your efforts, enjoying your children and grandchildren. That's what we should be doing and not holding on to this thing and say, I'm the only one that God can use. I'm the only one that, uh, that, that God sent. And that is why you see all these churches sometimes are the only one that preach because only their voice is what's anointed. God forbid that other people under them get developed by preaching in the branches. Nope. But they are the only one that God has told to speak. And that word, they are the only one that will say it. But nobody sees anything wrong with that. Then also in terms of offering, uh, you have people that are collecting money from different churches that need money, but are sending up to the, up to the, to the headquarter. So there are many things that are wrong in this. Again, I'm not a pastor. I'm not particularly experienced, but as someone who has worked in different organizations, I see organizations are run and the church is basically an organization. It does not make sense for a church in, uh, Idumota to be struggling. And they are sending money all the way to the headquarters and the headquarters. I mean, this is like the federation. We are running like Nigeria now <laughs> at this point. So it just, um, the tribal aspect also looks bad. You are turning it into a tribal place. And that's the case with most of these churches. You go there, they ask, where are you from? First thing, why should you meet a new convert or a newcomer? And you're telling them, where are you from? Because that church may be mainly one tribe. And if you are not, unfortunately for you, part of that tribe, you can't fit in. You will not fit in because they make it very glaring. The members also make it glaring that you don't belong because you are particular of this tribe. They will speak the language throughout. What if you are not? And I'm saying this as a detribalized Nigeria who has been to a lot of uh, redeemed churches too. So a lot of these things will be corrected. But first and foremost is just daddy going out and saying all kind of stuff. That's, that's like, if you want that person say they'll bring a cane and spank that person. Because the uh, GU is untouchable. He's doing so much, blah, 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 blah. It's sad and it makes us question the role of Christianity in the detrimental destruction of Nigeria. And that's where Peter recently came out and said, we dismantle churches in Nigeria. Yes, I had a position that was maybe shouldn't have said that because the person is and the way he said it. But there's truth to that matter, which is that churches and just, it's just making people not think. Look at all these churches uh, in, in, in like Eastern Africa. A lot of them, when they came, they dismantled a lot of churches. They had sanctions and different things in place just to free our people from our mindsets. But if you are spewing garbage, you are assuming there are people that will be eating that garbage up. If you spew garbage and there are no people to eat that garbage, your, your attendance will shrink. And that will send a message to you that stop spewing garbage. But if you continue to spew garbage and are people eating that garbage, then you keep on spewing more and more garbage. Like things like saying that God is the one stopping Nera. <sighs> Come on, guys. Does that even make sense to you? Enough is enough. And this has to stop. This has to stop. And this has to stop now. Because you don't get to a point, like I said, with the law of mission returns, where you do irreparable damage. Uh, to the body of Christ as a whole, not just RCCG. Because you have men of God like this who have been somewhat uh, uh, put into a position of courtist uh, era leadership, whereby nobody can talk to him. The king, the emperor is naked. Nobody can talk to the king. What he's saying is wrong and he needs to step aside. He's damaging the body of Christ. He's damaging the reputation of the church. He's damaging the reputation of the household of God and he's making God look like a fool. Yes, he's done a lot in the 70s and the 80s before the internet and in the 90s before people started to soji. These days, people are educated. Even though, granted, the majority of those that are going to all these events and all that, they've not traveled abroad. They've not seen how the world works. They are all Nigerians and they are clinging onto this our daddy Gio, who sometimes just comes and spew nonsense out with all the respects that you need to step aside. Again, it's not my business, and I know half of you in the comments we say I'm an idiot and blah, 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 because I should not talk about the man of God. But the man of God has gone astray and he should not be involved in politics. Now, there are a few other examples I'm going to give you guys as to why I think this is something that we really need to Take it very seriously. Now, you came out recently and said that you have to pay your tithes. If you don't pay your tithes, you're not going to go to heaven. And then later on, in, the, in an effort to correct that, it made it more worse. So again, this is not a video to put all the clips and everything he said, but it's just something for you guys to kind of look at the steps that this man is making. It's time for him to step aside. That's the own part of this video. Again, it's done a lot. By the grace of God, all of us will go to heaven. We'll see each other. He'll be fine. God bless his soul. But he's damaging the redeemed Christian of Church of God. He's damaging the other churches by someone like this with the power and the influence he has. Coming out to say such utterances that are pure garbage and borderline illiterate and mediocrity. And people are buying it. And at an international Holy Ghost festival, where there are a lot of redeemers that are very educated, 
Somebody needs to come together and say, Daddy, come on, don't go into politics. Stay in the word of God. And even the same word of God he stayed in, the last statement he made was, uh, if you don't pay your tithes, you're not going to go to heaven. And the other instances, not very long ago, he also said, you have to marry a woman who can cook. So what happens if you love someone who doesn't know how to cook and you eat out? Does that mean you are disobeying the word of the man of God? So, I mean, these are just instances where you see the Jew just coming and saying something like, Daddy, like killing someone, like, what are you talking about? Pastors should not be involved in current affairs. Pastors should not be involved in politics. Even in other developed countries, there's something called separation of church and state, whereby the pastor cannot talk about politics in order to qualify as a non-profit so they don't pay taxes. I know that does not necessarily exist in a place like Nigeria, where the pastor can be making prophecies and talking all kind of nonsense. And the problem is there's no regulation body. I did a video talking about the Nigerian church pandemic about a year ago now, I think. I'm going to put a link to that video up, up here. And you can see why there are so many churches in Nigeria and why the churches are rampant and they just get away with any kind of stuff. Otherwise, in a country that was functioning, what he said, he should be fined for that. So he stopped saying shit like that. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I don't know how else to say this. So he can stop saying stuff like that, you know, because it's annoying. It makes us who are Christians look bad and it makes other Christians look like idiots. And again, it's done enough. You guys do talk to him. Let him step aside. Let him come up with a succession plan. And the problem is that you have a lot of these churches that the church is a personal business. The church is a personal property. So he's the one who, again, he was ordained, you know. So he needs to find somebody else that God needs to tell him to ordain and let him step aside. It doesn't mean he will not be involved. I understand he wants to be involved because, you know, it helps and stuff for his age and activity. He wants to be active. Yes, but he needs to step aside from all these international facing, international facing outlets. Also, maybe he can just come out and have a political segment. And let him start a section where he just talk about politics. So we know that he's no longer involved in preaching and evangelism and his focus on politics. So guys, this is something again for me, I find it very annoying. I'm very, very aggravated. I got people sending me these videos of him saying that he's been praying. And because he has been praying, the dollar is stopping at, uh, at, uh, the dollar will have gone to 10,000. If what, like, what are you talking about? Like, does God even care about Nera? You think, say God, do you think really that God is following Nera and, and pounds and Jeep? These are the affairs of men. God has no interest in making you Nera stand or Nera go down. No. You know, so it's like, why are we bringing God into things that God does not want to bring it to? His leadership, your leadership is bad. And the person you have anointed in the place of Tinubu, who you and him have been shown to be eating and all that, again, politicians mixing, mixing up with, uh, with, uh, men of God and buying their, their, their buying their, they're buying their power and stuff. During the end bad governments, tend the end bad governments process. Why didn't you come out, daddy? Why didn't you come out and say something? Why didn't you speak up? against your uh, minister Remy Tinubu's uh, husband who is the worst president on Nigeria on Nigerian history is the worst like the baddest president ever because of the damage he's done in the last 20 months 18 to 20 months is worse than some presidents combined worse than the military era with him locking up children locking up children and keeping them in detention for 93 days and then uh, the uh, the British uh, labor minister or whatever uh, the British guy coming uh, uh, Lamy I think his name and basically asking them to release the kids now the can is still locked up and he's assaulting the other day they picked up Shuori at the at the at the airport and they quickly released him due to public out outcry so Tinubu has done so many irreparable damages to Nigeria that will take years if not decades if we can even recover from it if the country doesn't break up and you have a pastor a man of God a Jew someone like Adadi Adiboye of Redeem ah or more that that's bad dude that's very very bad so again this video is meant to be short and it's directly talking to all my fellow rccg members a bad disorder like all of you whoever you should have but tell him like he should just have his association plan he's done enough the, if this was a company they would have resigned him like pop, pop, sharp sharp and he keeps having this uh, gaffes and again i'm focused on the redeem people because i care about redeem and i used to be a member of redeem but there are other churches and i can play you guys videos upon videos upon videos or pastor saying this person will win, that person does not win, and then God changed. God does not change. God's words are infallible. You know, God does not change. If God told Bakari again that he will should run, then Bakari will win. You know? <laughs> so, guys, I don't want this to be too long, but uh, please, if you want to insult me, keep it polite. If you want to call me and hit them and call me whatever, keep it simple. But the truth has to be told. I'll end with this John 8 32, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next video. Bye, guys.